Hi engineers, today we are going to study about Newton rings. This is the last part in the interference. This Newton rings plays a crucial role in our study of the interference. And here we can see these rings. These are nothing but the Newton rings. These rings first observed by the Newton. That's why they are called the Newton. Now we will see when a plane of convex lens lies on the top of it or a gas sheet. A small layer of air is formed between the two lenses. The Newton rings are formed by interference phenomenon. Next one, what is the principle of Newton's rings part? So the phenomena of formation of Newton rings can be explained based on the wave theory of the light. So an air film of varying thickness is formed between the lens and the glass sheet. When the ray is incident on the surface of the lens, it is reflected as well as refracted. The refracted ray strikes the glass sheet. It undergoes a phase change of 180 on reflection. So the interference occurs between two waves that interfere constructively if the path difference between them is m plus half lambda or undestructively if it is m lambda. Alternatively bright and dark with this will. We can see the Newton's experiment whatever we are, are discussing now. In this experiment we have mainly this is the plane of convex lens. We are going to measure the film thickness and this is the glass plate beneath it and here it forms the air arc between the plane of convex lens and the glass. We have a sodium lamp. This sodium lamp typically its a wavelength will be lambda equals 589 nanometers. It will be there monochromatic light source. We will. So what it will do is it will block the total radiation and allow a very limited radiation. So if the light rays are coming in a parallel view, that's okay. If they are maybe coming from a single point, in that scenario we have to use a lens in order to get the plane. So these rays, whatever it travels, there we will find a glass plate which is arranged at 45 degrees with the light rays. And the ones the light rays pass on the glass plate, they will get reflected towards the plane of convex lens. Once they file on the plane of convex lens, then they will get reflect and we will observe the Newton rings pattern in traveling micros. Right, this is the experimental setup case. So whenever we are explaining, we have to draw this diagram and explain your own words. That is always better. So in order to get the radius of curvature, the index of plane of convex lens, initially we required a glass plate and on it, we have to keep the plane of convex lens and a light source is there. The light is directed towards the plane of convex lens by using a glass plate and the light pans on the glass uh, plane of convex lens and it will get reflected. And whenever the light pans on the plane of convex lens, there is a air column here and the light ray get reflected from the bottom surface of the plane of convex lens that's nothing but the top surface of the air column and from this glass so it's from here and then here two rays will get interpreted then we have a special conditions in order to show constructive and destructive interference now here we can see how these rings will be formed in reflected light. So this one is explained by N and these rings are produced as a result of interference between the light waves reflected from the upper and lower surfaces of the air film. So this is the glass plate, this is a plane of convex. So here whatever the gap is there, it's air is. So whenever a single light ray as is coming onto the plane of convex lens, it get reflected, maybe clearly from top surface, we will ignore it, and from the bottom here it will get reflected, and the another part, portion of the same thing get reflected here. So whenever they are getting reflected, this will point P act as a one source, and this one act as a another source. They are derived from the same wave, so they will act as a two parent sources. Now, whenever they are getting reflected, we have to calculate the path difference. So the path difference will be delta is equal to two mu t plus r minus lambda by two. This theta typically we will take for zero. Now, for normal instance, normal instance means straight in proportions light equals to the normal, and for a very small angle theta, it's a zero. So cos r plus theta is approximated as one. The net path difference between the rays 1 and 2 will be delta equal to 2 mu t minus lambda by where mu is refractive index of the air and the t is thickness of the air column and the lambda is wavelength of the light source. Then for constructive interference and destructive interference, for constructive interference, the path difference we have to equate to n lambda. Once we equate to n lambda, 2t is equal to 2n minus 1 into lambda by 
N is one two per destructive interference in order to form the dark twin disc. Two T plus lambda by two is equal to two N plus one is to lambda by. This is the condition for destructive interference. So both are equating. We get if two T is equal to N lambda. Now next one is the diameter of dark and bright waves. So in order to get diameter of bright and dark waves, we will take a plane of one which lens placed on a glass plate. So let R be the radius of the curved surface of the lens. That's what we are supposed to calculate, and T be the thickness of the film at a certain point. There is a two or three ways we can solve it. One is by using the Pythagorean property or by using the five. Pythagoras theorem. So, if we want to use the Pythagoras theorem, we will consider this part. This triangle, right angle triangle, we will take means in square equal to a c square plus a p square. Now, means in square is r square equal to a c r minus p whole square plus a p. That's it, r. So, on simplification, r square is equal to 2 r minus To the square we will since t is a very small so t square can be negative so finally we will get two t is equal to small r square by m two whether you use Pythagoras theorem or maybe the product of the parts is equal in the set. thickness we got r square by two bar now for the bright rings this value we have to substitute from t into the condition one where we equate it n plus one into lambda by so two mu t is equal to two n plus one into lambda by now t is replaced with r square by that will leads to r square is equal to n plus one lambda r by two mu mu stands for refractory now for the bright In this, the radius is directly proportional to two n plus one, and for n three, it will be r n is equal to simply same. And to break it, we can write the same expression. And if we want to convert it into diameter, d n by two point square. And on simplification, we will get d n square equal to two into two n plus one into lambda r by mu. For a, that the mu is equal to four. D n square is equal to But it's in big two into two n plus one here to lambda. So finally, we can write that d n is directly proportional to under root two n plus one, and the, as n plus from zero to one two three like that two n plus one is an ordinal. Then we will go for the dark three. Seeing what we are doing here is we are taking the path difference is equating to conditions for constructive and destructive inter, and then we are replacing the radius r n is equal to d n by two. That gives us Simply the expressions for diameters of right and top edges. So on the same line, we will get the d n is equal to under root four lambda. So the diameter of successive dark rings is proportional to square root of the natural numbers. So basically, d n is directly proportional to root. The diameter of successive dark rings is proportional to square root of natural numbers, whereas for right ring, it is proportional to square root of the odd natural numbers. Now we will calculate the radius of the ring of the plane of one ring. So we know that the diameter of the dark ring is d n square is equal to four n lambda r. Now if we consider n plus p dark ring, that is d square n plus n plus p is the same. Say for example, n we will take eight r n plus p means some else if we take as a fifteen three, that p will be p minus eight. It's a seven. Means seven rings that we have connected. So same thing. Wherever n is there, just replace with n plus. P. Now take the difference of this that will give four p lambda r. Now sum that right lambda. R is equal to p p square n plus p minus d n square by 4 p lambda. So this is the expression. And if we substitute the lambda value, p is it to be the number n n plus p the ring. So this is the diameter of n plus p and n the ring, the Newton's ring part. When come to the applications of the Newton rings, the Newton rings are phenomena that can be viewed by some of its applications are as follows. For testing the uniformity of a solid surface by studying the Right. So surface like this we can uh, analyze and uh, all its uniformity we can analyze. Then controlling the thickness of paint that is used on posters. And apart from this, we can calculate radius of curvature of plane of convex lens, and we can calculate wavelength of the different sources. Thank you. My video make them can listen to it, share, comment, and subscribe. Chayandi. E video by me, I Prayani comment. Rupamla tali chayandi.